1989. It was there where she also got her degree in French philology in 2003 and German philology in 2004. She has also got a C1 level in Italian language. In 2009, she defended her PhD dissertation on reading strategies and the internet. She is the author of a large number of articles about competences in a foreign language, reading online, and the use of ICT tools in the English classroom. These articles have appeared in Bilibilca, an online journal which is published by the Teacher Training Centers of Navarre. She has also written several conference papers at international level, among which I would like to highlight the following. Boosting Online Reading, a Successful Experience on Strategy Training, Eurocall 2010, Bordeaux, France. A strategy Training for Online Reading, Effects on Internet Reading Skills and Motivation, Call 2010, Motivation and Beyond, Antwerp, Belgium. Awareness Development for Online Reading, 10th International Conference of the Association for Language Awareness, Kassel, Germany. Besides her publications and the findings of her research, her wide knowledge of languages leaves no possible doubt that she has used a lot of reading strategies herself, and therefore she must have a lot to say about this issue. Vicky, thank you very much for being with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and especially at this time and being uh, such a big number of people. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, everything I'm going to explain to you is simply a proposal. First of all, I'm going to start with a theoretical context, with a theoretical context and then I'm going to present two proposals. One for paper reading. This is not my proposal, it's a proposal by Shamot uh, and others, and it's available online. This is one of the reasons why I have chosen it. And then, the second one is my own proposal, what I have experimented with, and is um, what we carried out at the university, but could be easily adapted, very easily adapted to secondary and also to, to primary, simply for you to know. And well, uh, in, uh, Lolly has mentioned my experience with languages. Uh, first of all, I have uh, I am not capable of speaking German right now, uh, so this is something that I would like to. Uh, that you know, languages are terrible in, in and some languages uh, work. But I think it's interesting for you to know that uh, I precisely I became interested in the strategies because I had that, the impression that once I had learned one language, I had. Um, I felt my position was different from those who did not have some, I had already developed some strategies and that is why I was interested in this issue. I have been interested in the, since the 1990s, okay? <coughs> so, so, quite a long time. Okay, I have made, made uh, I have done many things because I'm yeah. also growing eh? mature, okay? <laughs> well, so these are the two parts, paper and online, reading in L2, and I know you may, uh, some, it, it will be too easy for some of you, and, and I hope I'm not boring the rest, I have no intention of doing so, but simply creating the context, and the second part, the proposal. Well, there I go. So, first part, paper and online reading in L2. We are going to go through these different points, which are reading comprehension, approaches in, in, in reading research, text and hypertext, nature and characteristics, and the, the specific problems of uh, online reading. Well, so there we go with reading comprehension. Everybody knows uh, what it is, but it is not so easy to define or to um, know exactly how things go, because it's a process inside our mind. So it is, we don't know exactly what is going on, nobody knows. So we try to guess uh, how processes are. I am going to revise in one second the different proposals in this sense. And I would also like to, to mention that normally L2 uh, reading 
the I mean research has been dependent on L1 reading research and well eh, some people do not uh, agree and other people say that it's, eh, it's not the same thing and we should try new things and, and not be so dependent. Uh, something else uh, which is very important in the case of L2 reading is if reading is a language issue or if it is a reading issue. I mean, the possibilities of transferring strategies from reading strategies, I mean, from one language, that could be the first, um, um, not necessarily a second foreign language or a, another language, but simply from your own mother language to, to the language you are mm -hmm. learning. Well, about this, there are different theories, and, well, the... Uh, the interdependence theory said that well, it is uh, it is not uh, it depends on the I mean that is possible to transfer and then the, the threshold hypothesis says that uh, you need a minimum level of L2 in order to be able to transfer strategies from L1 and around that more or less there is quite uh, an agreement uh, that well. Transfer, yes, but once you reach, uh, once you have reached a certain level. Okay. So, uh, and something important to take into, also important to take into account, is the idea of literacy. Alphabetization uh, or alphabetization, in that sense. And the idea is that before, to be literate, it meant to be able, before I mean, some 10 years ago, or maybe 15, it was enough being able to read and write on paper. Now, yet, nowadays, if we want our students, or if we want to be literate, it's something else. It's not enough with reading on paper, but we are to be able to read online. Well, in fact, we are to be able to do many other things than just reading online. But one of these new literacies that they will have a, a point is reading online, which is one of the new literacies. I tell you this because for many years studies were about comparing reading on paper and reading online, which was better. Well, reading on paper is here, oh, sorry, reading on paper is here to say, but reading online is also here to say. So there is no discussion, uh, about, uh, the, the discussion has no, uh, makes no sense. Okay. So the thing is that we are to prepare students also for reading online and also in a foreign language. And this is the point. So, uh, approaches to reading research, I'm going to uh, be very quick with this. There are two types of approaches, the uh, proced procedural approaches and the confidential ones. The, the procedural um, focus on the process, how uh, the process works, and the confidential uh, um, focus on the elements that integrate uh, reading. Okay, so uh, this kind of approaches, the procedural approaches, uh, here we have the linear approaches or bottom top, the nonlinear or top button, and the interactive, not the web. Linear approaches or bottom top is the idea that uh, um, we simply decipher. Here, I know that maybe you cannot read, but the idea is that the ice is simply going from down to top. I mean, from the most elementary uh, to the uh, to the mind. Okay, so the ice blue, they they recognize the letters and then the words and then the sentence and then the meaning. And this is the point of view, the traditional point of view for reading for many years. But then, um, some years ago. Uh, we had a new point of view, and was the top button. I know that this doesn't look top button, but circle. Eh? But, but it's the idea of that the circle. I mean that the process begins again. And here we start from the top to the bottom. And the, the idea is that it's not a if we were only capable of reading from top to bottom. Sorry, from bottom to top, we wouldn't read. For example, if there is a word you don't understand, we wouldn't be able to guess. Because if you don't understand that word, you wouldn't understand the text. So there is something else than the ciphering, because we are capable of understanding things we don't really do not understand. Uh, sorry, words we really do, uh, we do not understand, and we understand because of the context. 
okay? And this is the, that first its meaning, and then we go down. Eh? That's more or less the idea. So I snoop, many predictions are done, and then you focus on sentences, then you focus on wor words if you don't understand, and then you focus on, on um, um, the different letters if you don't understand. So that's the what. But um, with time, um, these two approaches have, um, at the beginning they were two very separate theories, but then they have come together to, with the interactive theory and the idea that, well, both count, and in some moments we resort to top-bottom top processes, and in other moments to bottom-top. And that's more or less the, the idea. And finally, the um, componential approaches uh, here, this is very attractive in the sense of, well, eh, this, uh, to try to, especially for a foreign language teacher, to try to say, well, these are the, eh, the items they have to teach. Okay. So in the ideas have gone around this. Eh? So language comprehension, uh, reading comprehension is language comprehension, decodification, and something else. Okay, and then in uh, in L2, they, uh, one of the proposals is language literacy and knowledge. Those are uh, the as well. All this is far from eh, and the discussion goes on, and eh, but I think that it's interesting to see a little bit what eh, the, the theoretical framework. Well, so text, first I'm going to go with text, I'm going to go quickly, eh, and then with hypertext. All right, so we know that texts are is more or less based on Halliday and Hassan. Eh? Uh, okay, so texts are semantic units, they, uh, eh, they have this unity, and they have a series of characteristics connected to a structure and texture, then the importance of coherence, and then the, the cohesion not just of formal, but also of semantic elements. And then something important to take into account is that the text is not just a product, as some years ago uh, was considered, but the idea of being also a process. It is a product in the sense that the writer finishes the, the um, text and, and that's it. But it is a, a process in the sense that the reader then has to, to understand that text. So in that sense, a text is alive eh, and, and, and needs the participation of the reader. Well, then we have different text types, depending on the author, author's intention, mm -hmm. and also different rhetorical patterns. All this has had some implications in teaching. Um, for example, uh, some authors started to teach, uh, thought, for example, Patricia Carroll, that maybe teaching patterns or teaching different germs, uh, the students would have enough previous knowledge in order to predict when when they were reading a text, and depending on the on the type of text, they, it would be easier for them to understand things because they knew they jam, they understood the, the rules in that in that jam, and then they had the expectations. Okay, so that's uh, the okay. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, and then uh, there we go with the nature and characteristics of the hypertext. Hypertext is non-linear text, and is um, normally uh, you may include hypertext and also hypermedia. Hypermedia is the combination of hypertext and multimedia. But very often we use the term hypertext to refer to everything. Well, then uh, this hypertext has a, a, some a specific technical and linguistic characteristics. The technical characteristics are um, the structural flexibility that uh, it appears and sometimes you may have, the text may have different relations that sometimes it's like uh, hierarchical, sometimes uh, there are different, uh, di different possibilities. Then the interface, what you see, also changes a lot because of color, fonts, uh, images, etc. And then you may move in different ways uh, paging page by page or scrolling the, the text with the mouse over, uh, and then uh, something else to take into account is that there are element, multimedia elements, so sound and 
image in the sense of image and video. Okay, and then oops, sorry, and then the linguistic characteristics, uh, the main characteristics of the typical. I, I'm, later on, we will see the type of text in, the, in hypertext, but uh, is lexical in, uh, density and syntactic simplicity. I'm talking about, for example, uh, how often we see bulleted lists in, uh, uh, on the internet. Okay? So that is uh, a characteristic of the typical internet text. For example, when you enter a home page, the kind of text you may find in a uh, home page. Okay, that uh, kind of, of text. Well. And also, by the way, oral language is uh, that sometimes the, the is not included there, but sometimes in, in the language we find, even if it is written, sounds quite oral. So that's something to take note. <coughs> Links are the most important characteristics of hypertext. This is what makes reading uh, non, non uh, sequential. I mean, this is non-linear. This is why you, you you jump from one place to another, eh, to another, and this is, this is the main characteristic of of the hypertext and what makes it totally different and works a little bit like our brain in, in eh, this idea of jumping from eh, one place to another backwards, okay? And um, not all texts in the, um, on the internet, you may find texts that have been simply uploaded and have no links at all, but there are other texts that have, may have some links that are not totally necessary for the reading of the text, and in other cases, you go, it's a case of clear intertextuality in the sense that you simply read like two lines and then uh, something else, something else, something else, to, or uh, going to a different page. And of course, all this also ha uh, has our implications, it uh, has implications when teaching. Uh, for example, I mean that there are a series of problems, specific problems for mind reading that have some. Uh, and, and this reflects uh, in teaching. So disorientation is one of is the well one of, is the main problem on the internet is disorientation. Really not knowing where you are, we have all felt that. But also because of cognitive or, uh, overload. Eh? It's uh, because of both reasons. Really not knowing where or having read so much that you really eh, not, do not know very well what, where you are or what you are doing. Then. Um, some authors said that, that disorientation is a consequence of design problems. The problem is that it is so easy and so cheap to be original and creative on the internet that uh, some people uh, um, maybe sometimes uh, that um, drive you mad with, uh, with with different colors, ideas, etc. And this uh, this is a, a, a consequence is that you may get lost because of that reasons, or you may be attracted or, and not doing anything else and, and just uh, being caught because of the uh, how um, interesting or how appealing uh, it is. Well, uh, there are also linguistic problems, as uh, <coughs> the ones we have mentioned. Um, the internet is easy for a, for a quick reading, but we may have difficulties for uh, deep readings. So, and, the, and this comes because of the uh, language is written for quick readings. I mean, this lexical density and, and structural, um, in, I mean, the syntactic simplicity, uh, this is a consequence of that. And, and, also, uh, and also, well, by the way, very oral expressions and uh, that you may, in an L2, you may find very specific expressions and very, uh, and, and a language which is not always easy to, to understand. Something else, obviously, is the enormous quantity of information. Many of these things may turn into advantages, by the way, but I'm mentioning them as uh, problems because they are also problems, eh? that idea that there is always one more link. <laughs> okay, and then this is also connected with the idea that there are no boundaries, you don't know, and eh? it's like this swimming pool, no? that uh, very nice that eh, goes, uh, uh, water goes on and on, so eh, uh, uh, without boundary. <coughs> and there are, I have already mentioned, the many distractions, some of them coming, for example, from the multimedia, uh, because of being multimedia, but not only. 
and well, and so this uh, this uh, image. Okay. Well, and something else to consider is the fragmentation of the information because you may have to go through 25 links to to get the information you you want. So this is the second part, which is the uh, this is a proposal for developing paper and online reading. I am going to mention a little bit of theory about the strategies, but I have included it already in the this second. And the, so the, the, the idea is to, uh, to do a strategic training. Eh? So that's a little bit the, the, the proposal, to do a strategic training for paper reading and for online reading. For paper reading, it's nothing new really. Eh? Since the, well, I started in the <coughs> 70s, but already in the 90s was eh, quite uh, fashionable. Well, so I'm going to go to the reading skills and reading strategies, and then a training proposal for paper reading and a training proposal for online reading. Well, so, reading skills and reading strategies. The strategies started with good readers. I mean, observing the, the idea of observing good readers' skills, I'm going to normally. Sometimes very often we use strategies and skills as synonyms. But in this normally in this context we use skill for the things you, you naturally have and strategies for the things you learn. Eh? More or less that's the idea. So uh, origins of a strat uh, so the good uh, they observe uh, in already in the seventies they started observing good readers. Well, this did not start by the way with readers. It started in general with good learners. Eh? So. Uh, good learners, what they did, and uh, well, then the idea of teaching those skills, in the case of reading, those reading skills to the rest, to teach them as strategies. So, what are strategies? Um, the idea is strategies are conscious, this is a very important idea, the idea, the idea of being aware, the idea, the idea of being conscious. They are conscious uh, techniques or tactics or uh, whatever that the learner, that the reader uh, uses when uh, in, in the reading process. Okay? There are, there are many taxonomies, I'm not going to end, you may find taxonomies from the most famous one I think is Rebecca Oxford's, but well, and uh, Shamot also has a taxonomy, and, but very often taxonomies divide strategies <coughs> into metacognitive, and cognitive, or between uh, connected with the reading tradition, what global and local. I mean, the idea of strategies in the depending <coughs> on the reader and strategies depending on the text. More or less, that's the idea. Strategies that you uh, you may use in any situation. Those are the metacognitive, the idea of plan, organize, and uh, um, I don't know, uh, predict. Uh, background, uh, activate background knowledge, all that would be metacognitive and cognitive is uh, guessing from context when uh, something concrete you do not understand. So that's, uh, well, uh, we are not going to enter too much into that. And then there are different context, uh, contexts and different tools for strategy training. Nowadays, most people say that uh, the, mm, you should do it integrated in your own uh, learning and in your own teaching. Because when this started and this was uh, the, uh, and at its peak, maybe in the, in the late, in the 90s or so, uh, mm, some schools decided to do a strategy training and then, I tell you, especially in the United States, and then people who were not convinced at all of the method were forced to, the, to teach strategies. And well, it doesn't work like, like that. I mean, one has to be convinced because one of the main, uh, I will mention the tools in one second, but one of the main elements and the, the difference between people who use strategies successful and people who do not is metacognition, the idea of being aware, of being able to orchestrate strategies, not of having 35 strategies, or uh, of being, uh, I, I know they have taught me all these strategies, blah, 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 and, and then you don't, when the moment comes, you are not capable of applying any. So that's not the, 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 
the goal here, right? The goal is to be able to uh, develop that metacognitive awareness and be able to know when to apply and how to apply and, and to evaluate eh, and if it works or if it doesn't work. So this is a bit related to Anderson's idea of metacognition that is you have to prepare a plan, use strategies, monitor if those strategies work or do not. I tell you, this, this is the reader, eh? I'm not the, eh? the, the preparer sometimes. Eh? And orchestrate strategies, the strategies, sorry, and see the ones orchestrated in the sense that I have all these and, I'm, eh? and so eh? that I manage eh? in that sense. And assess if the strategy has uh, gone well or maybe say, no, I used this strategy and, and no, it was not the, the right one. So eh? that's. And uh, the tools you may use, well, um, there are surveys to you, I mean, very often uh, connected to making students aware of using strategies. So you may use uh, surveys, but you may also use um, think about protocols or, uh, 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 or train, uh, trainings and, and diaries, and uh, so everything to make students uh, think and put them in practice, obviously. And one, of the, and one of the possibilities is, uh, well, by the way, many of our textbooks have included uh, strategies, and so they, they are. But uh, another possibility is to train the students from time to time to do a training, That's, uh, but integrated in their own learning, uh, not a different thing. Eh? But uh, lesson seven, eh? I'm going to do a training because I think this is very appropriate for for it, and this is the proposal. Okay. So eh, that's uh, and, uh, that is some other project. Well. So we go with our first example, that is the case of paper reading. And the, uh, here we have. Uh, I'm going to give Lolly this uh, this address anyway. Here is the book. The two books I mentioned. Both are you can get them online, eh, free, and you can download them. Eh, that's the idea. And it's some, eh, I think they, they have, eh, you see, that eh, it's a, it is published by the Department of Education in, in Washington, so you can, you can understand that in, in the United States, for example, they have decided for this kind of, of eh, in some parts, this kind of training as a part for developing eh, literacy. And then the first one is for eh, elementary, I mean for primary, and the second, the second one is for a second grade. Eh? So that's, and the authors, the main author is the same, but the rest of the authors, they are like six or seven, this is why. <laughs> eh? Oh, okay. Eh? So that's it. Okay? Well, so, I'm uh, sorry. So, what I'm going to show you now that looks different. <laughs> okay. Okay. Eh? This is from that book. Eh, from the primary, eh, eh, the, the training for primary, paper training. By the way, I have chosen this way, eh, I have done it this way, but you can do it, I mean, it's not that, uh, so secondary education is uh, to be done online and primary on paper, not at all. Eh? This is simply by chance, okay? Well, okay, so. Eh, it shouldn't be this color, don't worry, the rest is not this color. So, it's a, uh, here, by the way. Okay, so we are going to see the, uh, it's three three points here. That, that is, if with the strategies you have preparation is very similar to the circle we have seen before. Preparation, presentation, practice, self evaluation, and expansion. Okay, I have checked that is only this paper, but the rest is okay. I don't know why. Okay, so practice. Uh, you will see now one by one, eh? this is what I'm, okay, so uh, I'm going to go one by one, the explanation Shamot gives, and then an example, uh, after every, every uh, part, there is an example, and the example is based on a book, uh, which is uh, probably get, get Stressed, I don't know if anybody uh, is a, um, a uh, book for children, um, first, second grade. Well, if you read, read it to them, it would be for uh, kindergarten, but what a day, first, second grade. So, the, the strategy 
she has chosen is act, uh, sorry making inferences. So all mm -hmm. the time in eh, I will be commenting on making inferences. So the preparation that she proposes is, is to in, in preparation is to activate the students' knowledge about that strategy. So for example, if it is making inferences, you may ask the students, okay, what eh, what, eh, what you do not understand something in the text, eh, do you look for a clue or for something? to help you, that would be the, the general idea. And the concrete example, here when it is an example, I, think, I always write up their example. The concrete example she gives for, with that, for using that book in, in that level, eh, that is, uh, which is, the book by the way is a story about a little frog uh, um, who is sleeping because it's winter, and then but, uh, he wants to get up and go out. But it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's snowing. And then he gets dressed and goes out. But he, three or four times he keeps forgetting different uh, garments. And uh, at the end he, he even forgets his under, uh, underwear. So there's this funny part. And then he, he goes home and goes to sleep again because he's so tired of dress, uh, getting dressed. But, okay. So it's, there's a lot of repetition, a lot of uh, humor. Uh, well, so ask students to tell you about the weather today or uh, for preparation or, uh, the or ask them what's the weather like in summertime, in winter time. <laughs> then explain uh, that uh, when you don't understand things uh, in my story, uh, that, uh, sorry, that sometimes we understand because we already know things, uh, because we have knowledge about those things. And then you show them a picture like the one here of how you get stressed and what kind of weather is probably preparing for, and then you write the answers on the board. Well, second presentation. And in the presentation, we introduce the new concept of the strategy, and there are five steps. In this proposal, I insist, my proposal is quite similar in this sense, eh? but name the strategy this is important to know. It's not, mm, no, they are to know. Here, making inference, you may ch it may want to change for children, or may, and that's uh, <laughs> something up to uh, what you consider most appropriate. Explain how to use it, tell them when to use it, model it, and explain its importance. And we're going to see the, uh, this one by one. Name the strategy, so give it a name, and, and then it's convenient to use an illustration because that uh, it, it will be easier easier for them to remember. Even we, at university levels, uh, we also use the uh, illustrations. Eh? We all like eh, a bit of. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sure you like more the slides because of the eh, detective. Okay, well, so explain how to use the strategy. Uh, you are to tell them what the strategy means and how to use it. So, eh, make inference is, is when we guess the meaning of a story, for example, by using clues such as the content or the pictures or specific words in the story. If you don't know what the word means, you read other sentences and try to figure it out. And uh, we we'll continue with the uh, uh, tell the students when to use. So you may use this strategy when reading, but you may use the strategy, make inferences in other cases. You may use this strategy also, for example, when listening. But I say when reading, but maybe when reading a book, when reading, uh, you may be more specific, eh? when watching a film, when, eh? so uh, you may be very specific. And then model the strategy. This is very important and this is connected to constructivism. And, eh? So the idea of you modeling the things they are going to do and, and, and pretending you are them. And then when you are reading a text, eh, and using this kind of think aloud technique eh, to say, ah, what does this, this word? And I, use, I do that with university, I did that with university. I mean, I, I do not use a, a ch childish eh, term, but I, I, I do that with university students without any, any problems. The think aloud technique. Uh, and sometimes I have written, for example, a reading guide. And in the moment you have a difficulty, uh, what should I do then? Eh? So you may do it um, aloud, but you may also give them a reading guide with, the, with all the, all the things aloud. Okay? And you may ask them to do it with other students, to do the thing aloud themselves, and then compare. And that's, that's 
some other possibilities. And then eh, eh, ex eh, in, a, in eh, the, the example of the presentation would be eh, with, uh, drug it, get dressed, and then you ask the students again eh, the weather, and then if they have guessed correctly. And then you tell the students that they are learning to guess, what, uh, about uh, what a story is about using a picture and the information. For example, here you may limit just to the, the idea of pictures in the in a first lesson with children. But with adults, you may not limit it to pictures. You may use everything eh? because this is normally started. Uh, it's, it's you advance obviously a, a lot more uh, with with adults than with or with younger uh, youngsters than with uh, younger <coughs> children in, in this sense. And then uh, you model eh, the strategy by thinking about, for example, say, ah, in this picture the dog is putting on his sock. Come on, I think it's going out, okay, and, and, and make them also guess and, and eh, with other examples. And then point number three would be practice. So it's not that you are, I insist, it's not that you are to look for other materials. The idea is to use the materials, I have to use an example, and this is why I chose this story, but you may use any story you want that you consider appropriate. And then, eh, eh, the, the content and the strategies thought, eh, self as material for the practice, then think, this is important about their abilities, because if students don't find strategies successful, I mean useful, it's not going to be any, eh, any work. <coughs> And then, uh, when you introduce strategies, you have to coach them with new strategies, with reminders of other strategies that they have used. But then you are to remove those reminders because the idea of strategies is developing autonomous learners. This is the, at the beginning you coach them a lot, but the idea is precisely to help them develop met, uh, uh, metacognitive awareness and being able of doing things themselves. And then they also need. Uh, feedback, very specific. Ah, you have used this and the name, eh? This very well in this case, and so for them to see how specific it is and in, in which cases. And here is the example of the practice. Eh? So, for example, in the practice, maybe they, they dress up and retell the story, and, and then you show them cue cards with other clothes, and then eh, they you say which clothes would be appropriate to, to go with Froggy. And, eh, and you may also eh, draw an animal friend of fro Froggy and then eh, eh, with the appropriate clothing and describing and, and so on. Well, I'm going to go on because I always... Um, eh, so, okay. Then all that you can find in that book, eh, I insist. And then evaluation. So the evaluation is the student's evaluation on how effective it was, the, the strategy in accomplishing specifically those tasks. No, ah, I think they are very nice. No, no. It, it, evaluation is task related. It's not eh, something, eh? okay, so how well it worked in, and sometimes you say, no, that strategy eh, is not appropriate, uh, and eh, the other it is. And then students, eh, students need to find out which learning strategies work then for them, because this is very important, because the strategies do not only depend on the task, but also depend on the person. Okay. And then there are several methods eh, for evaluation like class discussions or uh, strategies uh, checklists, eh, the different strategies, and then tick, 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 the ones you have to use, smiley faces, I mean, eh, that's uh, okay. eh, And so uh, here, only evaluation, I'm not going to stop too much, only evaluation is done, for example, with hands up. Eh, with a, so first of all, they, they raise hand if they, they, they guess uh, the kind of weather, so we can see if the, if the strategy was effective, and then they, raise, uh, they, they are asked to raise hands uh, if they consider that that strategy is useful or not useful. Uh, so depending on the level, you are using more or less complicated uh, tools, obviously. Okay. And, and then expansion is the idea of not using the strategy just in the context you have taught the strategy, but to use it for other uh, other tasks in class or in other subject areas, because they do a lot of reading, 
not only in English, because they can transfer strategies to the other <laughs> and uh, also in their own lives. And then, uh, uh, for example, if it is making inferences, uh, uh, you may want to model how to make inferences while watching a movie, for example, that I mentioned before. Or, and it is important to recognize <coughs> and seek occasions when learning strategies, instructions can be reviewed and reinforced. This is important to revise from time to time and not uh, strategies one day and never again. Okay? Even if you don't, what I mean is that even if you don't do a formal training later on, but it is interesting to, to, to mention them. Eh? And, and so eh, this would be, for example, eh, talking about the temperature or using the, eh, that would be the example. And the same pictures and have the children guess if it is cold or warm uh, outside, or tell the students to make inferences uh, when they are reading. Because here in the example, it is the case of you may use it for you reading, reading aloud, depending on the age of the children, or children reading. Uh, that's uh, obvious. And then have a student make guesses from covered pictures about the stories they are going to read. Uh, that's, uh, that would be expansion of that strategy. And also very important to emphasize the importance of the strategy. So I finish, I close this chapter and I go to the second example.
critical reading. And this is the, ex eh? this is the papers they, eh? they saw. This was the, the first half of the paper, okay? <laughs> These were the previous uh, strategies, and this was the second half of the paper. I want, simply wanted you to have the possibility of, eh? because otherwise you cannot read. Well, so, uh, so in this case, I'm not going to, eh, to stop, on, this is the same, eh, but it was uh, the different questions had to do with prediction based from context, activate previous knowledge, and prediction, the, eh, they, they were revising uh, strategies. The text was about uh, euthanasia. They had read a text about, uh, on a web called, uh, called De uh, Dead with Dignity, and this was from a, from a, from a priest, uh, from a Catholic priest, well, from, a, from the Opus Dei, in, in fact, eh? but uh, from a traditional, a very traditional point of view. Well, so, uh, especially when, when critical reading, and especially at the beginning, you are to show very clear differences, and then you go to more subtle differences as they, uh, eh? they are more trained. So, eh? uh, after reading, they had uh, some quest uh, questions uh, about the, the text, and then th this was the introduction, and then the presentation stage. Being critical, I'm not going to read eh, the importance of being critical, blah, blah, blah. and then uh, also with a symbol, eh, the balance. <laughs> okay, the importance of uh, balance. Okay, and then. Um, they had this part here. Eh? My husband, Rick, and quadriplegic priest challenge, eh, challenges are pro euthanasia field. And then just eh, they had to answer some questions comparing both articles. This would be quite similar to reading on paper. Eh? All this activity up to now, we could have done, done it with reading on paper. The difference comes now, okay? Because here we have the protocol for critical web reading. So, I also gave them a, 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 a protocol, which is, I haven't invented it, it is based on uh, different authors, of the import, importance, for example, of observing URLs. So, for example, uh, the importance of uh, the abbreviations and the name of the entity. All that is giving you information. So, what I mean, if it finishes in .org, or if it is in S, this kind of thing is giving you information, and you are, eh, I tell you because this is also very useful when they, for Google results, and, eh, so uh, attention to the name of the URL, and also the name of the entity in that, eh, for example, in these cases, one was death with dignity, and the other one was Catholic or so you can already guess a little bit of eh, eh, what things are going to eh, be about. Then enter the page and look for information about the organization, and then these were uh, the different sections. So look for sections such as about us, background. If you cannot find any link eh, to that page, you may find it on the home page. Well, eh, so the, we gave them different and how to the idea of uh, trying to uh, come back to the, to, to the real page eh? uh, uh, using dashes, and this is in the example, this is what the, uh, the Catholic, you see, eh, going, eliminating the, until getting the, the home page, and for them to look at them, they have to do the same with the, with the other link. And then finally, they browse the page to find any other significant proof uh, about their purpose, Ideology, quality, content, eh, which is content quality, timeliness, and navigability, which is also important. Eh, that's, eh, that everything is a part of quality. Eh, so, and here they eh, look at sections, other articles. Of, eh, so they had to. The, the training was on home pages. Eh, really, eh, that, that was the, all the time. The context was home pages, and eh, here they they had to eh, to do it with other pages. And then, uh, after doing that, they had to do this, the transfer. At, at the beginning, I used to give them the word, why, and how to use the strategy. But as this was the last one, uh, it was open. Eh? And when you can use the strategy, and can I use it in other It was them to answer in this case. 
And finally, there was a diary. Every in every session, they had to uh, fill uh, fill in a, di a diary, and this is the the example of the of the diary mm -hmm. eh, with all the strategies. Uh, I added the strategies as uh, at the beginning. They only had two strategies: then four, then five, and then six. Okay, but the questions were always the same. Eh? If they had used the strategies, um, if it was useful, and if they were happy about the strategy training and if they were satisfied with their own reading yeah, of the day, yeah, of the, okay. And that's, uh, okay, yeah, that's the end of the training, and I go with the results. Uh, we uh, had this question of if it is useful, uh, strategy training uh, was useful for online reading, and I would like to, to tell you that we have done this with semi-linear and non-linear reading. Semi-linear, we have considered when you have a text uh, with a couple of links, but that looks like a text, we, we consider that semi-linear reading. Whereas when the text they are to look, uh, they are to read, doesn't look like a text, <laughs> but eh, they have to, as I said that uh, before, eh, they have to go to different, for example, a menu and then find information in a menu, go eh, forwards and backwards, and, and all that we consider non-linear reading. So, uh, in the case of semi-linear reading, uh, we see that the initial, in fact, the control had a bit higher, eh, was high, but there were no statistical differences, eh, even if it was high, a bit higher. Then, in the final, the, different, eh, the situation is totally different, and you can see that the progression piece for the, uh, for the, I mean, the, the, the Significant differences is for the case of the progression, also in the case. So you can see that both groups progressed, but uh, the experimental one, the ones with the training, the one with the training, eh, <coughs> uh, significant difference. And it is the same with non-linear reading. The situation was very similar. The experimental a bit lower in the initial, then in the final, both improved. Uh, <laughs> but it was the, the it was clearly uh, higher in the case of the experimental. And so the conclusions, well, uh, so the effects on internet with the conclusions of this uh, research uh, in uh, has a positive effect on internet reading, and there is an improvement both on uh, semi-linear and non-linear. And the significance is because it's one of the first investigations to focus on real electronic texts because there are many, many things connected to, to reading online <coughs> or to, I mean, to read, with reading on the internet with very specific pro, uh, programs. Um, very often pro, programs from the 90s uh, uh, that, uh, and they, uh, I, I mean, about text, uh, constructing text, and, uh, but um, the idea of there is not research, and this is, I also, uh, I think that you have also the opportunity of doing action research, because this is also action research, it was in my case, to see a problem in class, try to look for, a, uh, to solve it, and with a proposal, and it worked in my case, but I, I mean, you may find other, other uh, cases in which uh, it, it doesn't work, or, so the idea is to see a little bit, uh, what are the, the possibilities of using strategic training um, on the internet? We are at very early stages eh, in that sense, but, it's, but we are earlier stages, but we cannot stop. This is a, that the technology is here, and reality is, is here, and we are Thank you very much. <laughs> Some minutes left for questions and or comments. <laughs> Any questions from the audience, please? Short questions? <laughs> comments? I bored you. <laughs> anyway, Vicky will stay with us today and tomorrow, so perhaps uh, you will take the opportunity to approach her and ask her whatever you want. Thank you very much, Vicky. Thank you very much for your attendance.
Thank you. 